Hello friends, I'm Rosa, welcome to the channel. So today we are going through all of the Jan- no, it was December last month. We're going through all the books that I've read in December. So my statistics say that I read 13 books plus 7 volumes of The Walking Dead that I'm not including, at least not in detail, because I can't tell the difference between the volumes, I'm sorry. And that was not including the seven Walking Dead volumes, 3,990 pages. So two of the 13 books were also graphic novels. We're gonna talk about those though. So I would say overall, despite having quite a lot of work on my plate, it was a pretty successful reading month. I didn't manage to fully finish all of the books that I wanted to for the Reindeer Readathon. I was missing two that I read afterwards, but I didn't manage to basically because I got Pokemon Violet for for Christmas and I spend a couple of days playing that at the end of the month so <laughs> but we're gonna talk about the ones that I did manage to read so if you want to check out any of the books that I'm talking about in today's video I will make sure to leave links to them in the description box if you want to check out my book club by the way I will be leaving a link to that in the pinned comment and if you want to skip a book by the way there are chapters in the timeline below as well so if you don't want to know a synopsis or my opinions on a certain book you can skip ahead but we are starting out with the book club's primary pick for December, which was A River Enchanted by Rebecca Roz. This is an adult fantasy with romance as well. So in this one, we follow Jack, who has lived on this island. It's split up into two. So we have the east and we have the west. The two sides don't really get along at all. But Jack has been living on the mainland for a while until he received a letter from one of the leaders of the east side asking him if he could come back because they needed his help with something. Jack plays music which if he plays it in a certain way on this island is actually like he performs magic so they need his abilities for something because girls have started to go missing on the island. So young girls think like five to ten or something like that and so Jake comes home to the island where he is reintroduced to everyone including Adira who is currently the laird of or at least becoming the laird of the east so the leader. The two of them were nemeses when they were children so they were kind of like children or childhood enemies yeah and it might prove itself a little bit of a challenge to get reacquainted for the two of them because they didn't really used to be friends but it's also very charming to follow. So as for this book was not as happy with it as I thought I was going to be, but I really did enjoy the vibes of it. The whole like spirits thing was a little bit confusing at times, I'm not gonna lie. I think part of the mystery, I because there is a mystery over this, like what happened to the girls, who took the girls, where are the girls, you know, all of that. I think I kind of predicted a little bit of that as well, so that's unfortunate for me, but overall a very atmospheric, kind of book if you are going into this expecting like it's not an it's not a fantasy romance i would say it's mystery over romance because the romance is very slow burn in this one so don't expect like huge things from the romance plot definitely think more like vibes from a fantasy island mixed with i don't know things picked out from like old stories old I think it's Irish. Scottish maybe? Actually it might be Scottish and not Irish. Wait, I think it's Scottish, which is so awkward. <laughs> Just scratch every time I've said Irish in this video so far. Swap it out with Scottish. Okay. But I like the writing in this book. Rebecca Ross has a very flowy, kind of comfortable way to write her book. Well, at least based on this one. I can't really speak for her YA because <laughs> I've not read any of them yet. But it was very, very comfortable to read. I was a bit confused about the characters now and then, I'm not gonna lie, but that's because for some reason two of the characters their names I just didn't catch them at all and then we swap from point of view to point of view I think there's a total of like five or four point of views in this book and so when we came back to the two other characters I completely forgotten who they were <laughs> but they actually turned out to be very lovely so I'm happy that I called their names eventually and figured out exactly who they were <laughs> but yeah I am interested in continuing this duology because I did like it it wasn't like amazing to me but I did enjoy it so a fire Inthus is already actually in my library um but i've not hauled it yet so you'll see that one later on this month but that was the primary pick the secondary pick for the book club was spells for forgetting by adrian young which is a contemporary fantasy also mixed with mystery i was actually going into this scared that the two 
books were gonna be very much alike because they do have... Okay, so it's two female authors that primarily writes young adult books but have started writing adult books and they're both romance and then fantasy and mystery but this was different from the other one because it's a contemporary fantasy and I hadn't really caught that going into it because I, I think I chose not to read the synopsis before going into it but in this one we also follow a guy who had lived on an island see you see the similarities <laughs> but after a girl died in a fire he ran away with his mom because everyone thought that he was the person who killed the girl and unfortunately his mother has died in the meantime so we're fast forwarding like 13 years or something his mom is dead and he has her ashes and he wants to spread them on the island because that was her wish so he has to go back and once he's back on the island he didn't really get a warm welcome from people there they don't want him they're still suspicious of him plus his childhood sweetheart the love of his life basically is the other character that we follow as well because there are two points of views in this one um, but she's still on the island and there might be some stuff uh, happening there as well so and then it's about essentially what actually happened that night before him and his mom had to leave like what actually happened that night this was very much an atmospheric mystery but with a lot of romance over it like there's a lot of talk between these two characters in general I do like Adrian Young's writing so that vibe with me but as for the story I wasn't really overwhelmed or anything I think I was expecting more fantasy from this than what I got because the fantasy is very like witches exist but they're not the kind of fantasy witches that I think of it's more like oh here's some tea like that kind of witch <laughs> I don't know we can do a little spell like that kind of witch like you borrow the magic from the island instead of you are the magic do you get what i mean so i was maybe expecting a little bit more fantasy to it than what i got also because i think there's like five instances of actual magic it's more like the island feels alive at times and i don't it's a vibe an atmosphere got a whole lot more romance than i thought i would uh which really surprised me <laughs> but it wasn't what i went into or it wasn't what i wanted when i went into this so i think it kind of it just took me by surprise because it was a whole lot more than I thought it was going to be but definitely overall a spooky book I would say that this would make for a good read during fall so like September until November I think it would be perfect for that time of year I know I think it also kind of shows on the cover a little bit like you know or at least if you live in the northern hemisphere if you live in the southern one just ignore those months <laughs> whatever it's fall for you you know and if you live in a country where it doesn't really get proper fall and sorry. But as for the mystery though, I think there was one sentence at some point and then after that sentence it kind of just, the whole story just kind of dawned on me. And I hate when that happens because I want to be surprised. But you know in mysteries when they leave like little tales now and then and you got to pick them up but not be very like, they don't have to, they shouldn't be obvious tales. You just have to read it and, and then it makes you think at some point there was one sentence like that where I just it clicked all of a sudden it just clicked and it was like two-thirds into the book or something I can't remember exactly what it was but I just remember thinking oh so this is how it went down and then I was right and I didn't get surprised and that sucks because I want to be surprised <laughs> like I want to guess away and think I got it right but then I don't actually have it right at the end you get what I mean like suddenly there's a fifth twist incoming from the right and you're just like whoa where did that come from that's what i want to happen and unfortunately i just kind of just hit me like oh right okay i think this is how it goes and then that was exactly how it went but yeah overall definitely another like or not an, not another it's a very character driven book i would say with like sucky people on an island because a lot of the a lot of the inhabitants on this island suck <laughs> like they, they suck as human beings they suck greed is a thing okay greed is a thing i can say that that's not a spoiler you would think like island people they're living in this little community on an island and everyone knows each other you would think that they would be happy and nice and stuff but no greed so i like the thought of like the island having a life of its own though i liked that it added so much atmosphere to it there was like a spooky vibe all the way out or all the way throughout the book but as for the mystery, unfortunately, just called it. I wish I hadn't, <laughs> but anyway. During my Christmas readathon, I also read four books plus a short story. I read One Day... No. <laughs> 
One Day in December by Josie Silver, Window Shopping by Tessa Bailey, In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, and also Make You Mind This Christmas by Lissy Huxley, Huxley Jones. Plus I read Resting Scrooge Phase by Megan Quinn. But since we're talking about 13 books today and none of them are series, I'm gonna skip talking about these. You can, however, check out my Christmas readathon if you want to know my opinions on these books because I talked a lot about them in that video. So we're not gonna talk about them today but overall this was my favorite then probably one day in december then window shopping and then make you mind this christmas and i don't know where i'll put resting scrooge face because it's a short story but um yeah i read these four plus that short story as well i think i'm gonna do that a little bit more like linking a video where i've talked in depth about the books um just so we can make these wrap ups a little bit shorter because i realize that sometimes the videos end up being like 50 minutes long and that's a very long time to listen to me just rant about books <laughs> so that's what I'm gonna do from now on hope you guys are okay with that I have no idea what to do for January because currently it's the 10th and I have read almost seven books no almost nine eight books almost eight books and I don't know how I've managed but I have so the January wrap up in February is gonna be a very long one as a part of a buddy read with a friend of mine, I read November 9 by Colleen Hoover, which I'll admit, like, sorry, that annoyed me. <laughs> I'll admit, okay, so, hmm, let's talk about the story here first. We follow two characters, a guy and a girl. So the girl is struggling a little bit with her father. He's kind of a bit of a, he's very, very selfish. She's also gone through something a couple of years ago where she almost died in a fire actually and has ended up with scars on like a big part of her body and also her face. So she has some insecurities as a result of this thing she went through. And before this happened as well, she was like an up and coming actress and now she doesn't really know what to do because of her scars on her face. She doesn't feel like she can be on TV or in movies and such. So she's just kind of like struggling with her dad who is basically telling her like, give up your dreams because you're scarred and it's very messed up. And then while she's out eating with him, this guy all of a sudden shows up at the table and is like, oh hi, sorry I'm late. <laughs> How you doing honey? Or whatever. And the two of them decide to fake date for a little bit in front of the father, basically just to get him to shut up because he's a terrible human being. And after this, they spend the rest of the day together and they get along really well, but neither of them feel like they have time for a relationship. And the girl is also also moving to New York the next morning and so they decide make a deal that they'll show up at this restaurant in a year from now on November 9 and so we follow them throughout like five or six years on November 9 as they meet up and everything that happens in between is kind of like summarized during those days and there's some heartbreak in there there are some situations there's a lot of longing and a lot of pining and did I say Alana? a lot of pining and I think that is pretty much the plot for this one. I will say my friend really enjoyed this. I was already on the fence like, I'm gonna find the exact moment where I was like, okay, I don't think I like this book. <laughs> About page 49 out of 307 because it's 49 pages into the book. Well, he's taken her clothes off, which sounds like they're doing something they're not doing. But anyway, he's taken her clothes off, but it's written from her point of view. And she's constantly like, she's literally crying by the way which is very visible to him but he continues and in her head she's like i need him to stop but she also recognizes that she's frozen up and i'm so uncomfortable like if i was taking someone else's clothes off and they started crying i would have been i would have been like are you okay should we stop i shouldn't take her clothes off right now right like i would have recognized that if people are crying while you're undressing them stop what you're doing <laughs> But he didn't. And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> it made me so uncomfortable. And then it turns worse later on. So that's the whole thing. Um, yeah. So no, I did not really love this. A lot of miscommunication as well. I think the concept of it, the premise of it, like them showing up to this place once a year and seeing how they're doing, but also like, I don't know, just give in and be with each other. Like... <laughs> But then again, if they'd said that during like the second November 9, then we wouldn't have a book. But I don't know, it was like at certain points it felt like there wasn't really an excuse for them to not be together. So I just, anyway. <laughs> 
but I think my friend liked it, so you might like it too. I just had issues with that scene and then I just felt it got worse and worse after that. And then it definitely got worse towards the end. Um, but I'm not gonna spoil anything, so I'm gonna just... Yeah, anyway. We're cutting that short, just leaving it like that. Can't recommend, but I also kind of... So I know it's been hearing that I didn't like him and just being like, <laughs> I'm gonna slap you then. Anyway, I had heard a bit about... It seems like it's one of the books by Colleen Hoover that's not as well loved as some of the other ones so I was a bit hesitant to start it anyway but I don't know we decided to buddy read it and I was in a good mood about 30 pages into it and then I was like uh no. <laughs> I just feel like everyone should know that if people start crying and freeze up stop whatever you're doing and ask if they're okay just stop okay that's that's my message yes I read two arcs so I read Daughter of the Siren Queen by Trisha Levenseller which is the sequel to Daughter of the Pirate King and I didn't love it as much as the first one um, but I still thought it was really good, like, really good YA fantasy, very fast-paced, very funny, badass female character. But in the first one, at least, we follow Losa, I think her name was, who is the daughter of the Pirate King, but also daughter of a siren. She's half siren, half human. Her father is very evil and has sent Losa on several missions or quests in the past. The one that she's on as we start book one is, uh, she has gotten a goal or been given like a task. She has to get a map that is on this enemy ship. So she has to infiltrate the ship and get this map. So what she does is that she lets herself get taken as a prisoner to end up on this ship. And then at night while she is imprisoned on the ship she manages to get out of her little cell in the basement of the ship or whatever that's called so she can have a look around. Unfortunately for her there is a guy on the ship who he's the brother of the captain He's like his right hand man or whatever that's called on a ship, I can't remember. And he's constantly getting in the way, but he's also kind of like, he's kind of cute and there might be some attraction there and Losa is getting a little annoyed, but at the same time she's also like, well, I kind of like looking at him, but was, yeah, anyway. So there's a lot of that, but that's the first one. The sequel is kind of different. They go to an island and there's stuff going on <laughs> anyway. They're on the water a lot. I think I can say that, that's not really a spoiler. It's a pirate book, but anyway. <laughs> Who would have thought? Water in a pirate book. Never heard that before. So, so original. <laughs> but yeah, I didn't really love it as much as the first one. I really thought it was good anyway. I, I would say this kind of like, it doesn't remind me of Fable by Adrian Young if you've read those, but I think I would, because they're two different, completely different stories, but I think both duologies are kind of for a certain kind of mood. Like, if you're looking for something very action-packed, fast-paced, fun, like a fun read like that, both of those duologies would be very, very good recommendations. They're not too complicated, they're both on the shorter side, I think Daughter of the Siren Queen ended up being like 350 pages or something, so it's not a very long book. I think I read it in like one or two settings or something. But I would say they are for a similar kind of mood, if you get what I mean. So just if you're looking for something fun and fast-paced, this felt like a very good pirate fantasy YA book. The other arc that I read is one that is actually actually out here in today? It's out today! I think it's out today. <laughs> is it out Tuesday? I think it's out today when I'm recording this, which is Tuesday the 10th. It's Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies, but it might also be out later this month. I can't remember, but I had an arc of it, Thank You Net Galley, and this is by Heather Fawcett. So in this one we follow Emily Wilde, who is an academic, she's like, you know, that kind of type. She's very nerdy, she loves to learn about fairies, and she has gone off to a fictional Norwegian island outside of the mainland Norway to study fairies, a certain kind of fairy that resides on this island. And in the process as well, she has to like learn to know the people and their ways, the people that live on this island and how they behave and their mannerisms and you know, all this stuff. She kind of has to find her spot, but unfortunately, he Heather, <laughs> unfortunately, Emily Wilde is also very introverted and awkward and not good with people. And so she's finding it a bit difficult to get to know everyone. But she also has the help of her academic rival, 
whose name I cannot remember. Is it Brambleby or Bambleby? I think it might be Bambleby. I cannot remember his first name. And she also suspects that because he's very charming and he looks nice and he just has a certain, there's a certain thing about him, she kind of suspects that he is a fairy himself. So he's fae, like he's some kind of, like she says it very early on in the book. And so with the help of him, she, you know, works on getting acquainted with all of the inhabitants on the island, but also they do research for her encyclopedia, also because Bambleby needs her help with something as well. Anyway, that's, yeah, that's all I can say, I think. Oh, and this takes place in 1909 as well. I just remembered. But anyway, so this is not confirmed at any point in the book, but as a representation thing, I think, I think Emily is autistic. Like, I got that vibe. She has a way of writing and it's a big contrast because at some point, Bambleby writes like a little bit in the book and it's very different from how Emily Wild writes in the book. So I think she's autistic, but it's not confirmed at any point. But I think she is. <laughs> It's built up like a journal, so each entry is a new chapter. They're all dated except from like a couple because she loses track of time, but they're all written like a journal, so she's writing down her research and also what's happened with her day. But there's also dialogue involved, which is kind of questionable for a journal, but it's okay because there has to be, there has to be, uh, there has to be dialogue in a book, obviously. <laughs> well, I mean, in this book at least. So I thought that was quite fun to start out with. I got a little bit annoyed with it at some points because Emily had a tendency to go off on very detailed rants, which at times I felt wasn't really necessary. <laughs> so I got a little bit impatient at certain points throughout reading this. That was the thing. I don't like rants with like lots of facts about stuff that I feel like I don't need to know. It's not important to the story. It's just like, like food mentioned or something. I don't, it's talked about the same with Make You Mind This Christmas. There's a lot of mention of different details at this like event that they go to. And I'm like, I don't need to know all the dishes that they serve. <laughs> Like, I don't need to know this. Um, so it wasn't specifically food in this situation. I can't remember exactly the details that she gives, probably because I also skipped some of them, but there were rants at times as well. And then my other point was this is an adult fantasy, historical fantasy, and then it's also marked as romance. And this might just be an autistic trait with Emily that she doesn't actually, I think she mentions it at something or some point throughout the book that she doesn't write down like overly personal things things. So we have to look at this as Emily being the narrator of this book. And since it's a journal as well, if she decides she doesn't want to share romantic details between her and Bambleby with the journal, we're not going to know as a reader either. And I think at some point she actually writes down that she doesn't write a lot of that stuff or like her romantic thoughts about Bambleby or something. Um, but from my personal taste, I need a little bit more of it. Also because Bambleby, I just don't really like him as a character. <laughs> I thought it was very selfish. I don't know, very selfish and very arrogant, which I've liked arrogant characters in the past, but for someone who says he's so taken with Emily, you don't seem so taken with her. But that might also just be because Emily is the narrator, you know? Like, I don't, it just seemed off. Like, it seemed out of the blue all of a sudden. I didn't get the vibes, but that might also just be because Emily hasn't written down stuff that would give me the vibes, if you get what I mean. This is hard to explain. <laughs> I feel like I need more people to read this book so I can discuss this with them because it is written in a different way with it being written as a journal, but as an example, no, I can't say that because that's a spoiler. Yeah, see, I need more people to read this book so we can discuss it. So please, go ahead. <laughs> please, feel free to discuss it with me. I would love to. <laughs> but I thought it was cute for like a winter read. I just, personally, the romance wasn't for me. I like learning about the fairies. I like the lore aspect to it. I think Heather did a lot of research on fairies for this book. And I think there's also at the end, it's kind of like set up for the sequel as well with a, like an Irish myth or something put in there. I do have a question though as a Scandinavian. If it takes place on a Norwegian island, it's a fictional island, but if it takes place on a, on a Norwegian island, why did all the characters, like literally all the characters on this island, why did they have Icelandic names? It's been bothering me since. I asked one of my Norwegian friends about it and he was like, yeah, no, that doesn't make sense to me either. I feel like for a book where so much research was done about fairies for this book. It would have been very easy to do a little bit of research on Norwegian names because they don't end in Dottir. <laughs> 
<laughs> they they end in sun or like sen. Dot here is uh, Icelandic, so that was a little bit confusing. But anyway, it might just be because. I'm aware of it, maybe I'm not supposed to be aware of it, but anyway. I just have massive questions about it because what was the thought process? Was it because Heather, as a, as an author, liked Datir names a little bit better than names that end on Sen? I also realized that this rant is a little bit confusing if you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so just a quick, quick little info. A lot of names from Denmark, which is where I'm from, and also Norway end on Sen, which means it's basically like if you take the name Jens, J-E-N-S, and then turn it into a last name, it would be Jensen, which means son of Jens. With Icelandic names, I can't come up with an Icelandic first name, but they end on Dattir instead, which means daughter of, and I like that. I always thought it was cute. One of my ta taekwondo trainers was Icelandic and her last name ended on Dattir. I always thought it was cute. I would much rather be called that than son, <laughs> but because I'm not a son of, but anyway. <laughs> So like I get it if that was it, but it's still confusing to me. I'm gonna move on now. <laughs> I can rant about this for a very long time. So three more. The last book and then I got two more graphic novels. I read The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Brockbend, which I loved. <laughs> so in this one we follow a girl who, she's an orphan, she's been taken in by this very powerful vampire who's currently leading this like faction of vampires. They live a very luxurious life, but she's also quite clearly to us. She's not aware of it, but to us, at least I was aware of it. She's a bit of a prisoner there. Not in the same way as Orin from Guild, but like her father, she calls this vampire her father and he sucks. He's not very nice to her. So to us, it's a kind of, it's a questionable situation she's in, but she's like also loving it and not quite aware that her father is not a good person. So there's this trial thing that's not really explained why it's happening, or at least I can't remember, but there's a trial thing going on and a lot of the vampires are partaking in this and she's decided that she wants to partake in it too as the only human because it's basically a trial just for vampires. And so she does, but it turns out, first of all, it's a lot harder for her as a human to actually be a part of this, this trial Trial. You're supposed to have allies at some point, which she's finding issues with because all the vampires want to eat her. <laughs> There's a question of bloodlust as well. There's like a three factions of vampires and one of them has a sickness and like one of the, the vampires belonging to this faction has a sickness and at some point they'll just go completely crazy and start bloodlusting and they will just go into a frenzy essentially. So she has to deal with that as well and everyone else just wants to eat her or kill her. It's not easy. It's not a good time. And so at some point she meets this mysterious guy who actually offers to be her ally along with a friend of his. But the thing is, so they get closer and closer throughout the trials, but the thing is only one can become the victor. And the winner of the trials also ends up getting a present from this like goddess, this vampire goddess. So there can only be one winner at the end though. And what happens when people at the end have to fight to the death, you know? Yeah. <laughs> but that said, the two of them still are having a hard time fighting this attraction between them as well. And yes. I hope that was not too many details. I do realize that me trying to explain worlds is not e I'm not a- it's not easy. I'm not a- I'm not an author for a good reason. <laughs> one of them being I know two languages but I don't know either language really well. <laughs> but the other one definitely is that I suck at explaining things so as a booktuber that's not easy. It's not an easy time. <laughs> but I hope you got like the gist of it anyway. So this book definitely gave me Sarah J Mass vibes at times which is for me a compliment. I love Sarah J Maas, call me basic, I don't care, I love her books, they resonate with me on a whole other level, I just devour them essentially. And this at times definitely gave me those vibes. We also, like it's vampires instead of fae, I just want to say, which I think is super cool. It's been a while since I have, so I love vampire books, um, I love vampire movies, vampires are some of my favorite supernatural creatures, I just, I don't know, I just like them most I think, <laughs> but it's rare that you come across vampire books that are actually good and so I was maybe it was because they were given wings in this one that I'm just like yeah love them <laughs> I don't know. But it was, uh, it was a very good read. I don't have any qualms with the writing whatsoever. This is an indie book, by the way, so if that's something you're interested in, definitely give it a look. Give it a shot. 
give it a chance. I can highly recommend it, especially if you like Sarah J Mass. I'm losing my voice. If you like a little bit of steam, not necessarily super much smut, although, no, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> there are vibes, there's attraction, you know, there's longing and all that stuff. But, um, it's not, to me, it's not on the same level as Sarah J Mass, but we're getting there, okay? I think this is also... I'm, or maybe not, I can't remember how many books she's written. If you have noticed or ever come across, there's a book that's very popular on TikTok at the moment, which is called Daughter of No Worlds. Same author, so I'm definitely interested in checking out that trilogy because I really love this book. It's also like 500 pages and I think I've read it in like two days or something, so that says a lot. <laughs> but yeah. Also, if you like a badass female characters who know how to use knives and who's not afraid of being the underdog, she's got you covered. I forgot her name, but she's Oriya, I think she's got you covered. So, yes. But don't think high fantasy, definitely think fantasy romance with a pretty good plot as well, I think. Very interested to see what happens in the next one, but very heavy on the romance, so. And then the last two. I'm not sure what to say about this one, but I read The Tea Dragon Society by K. O'Neill. <laughs> which it's basically just like a cute vibes book it's a middle grade graphic novel with fantasy we have like mini dragons but yeah i'm not really sure what to say about it it's like 70 pages total it's it's a very quick read and a lot of it is like because the art style is very cute so a lot of it is basically pictures of like landscaping for example and it's just i don't know if you're looking for like a little cute if you just need like cute vibes i would recommend it but it's not heavy on the story <laughs> we do follow a girl in it who is basically learning the craft of making tea because the tea dragons have like depending on what tea dragon you have they also get bonded with humans so each human has like their own little tea dragon or at least the ones in the society do and depending on what dragon you are working with at the time you can make different kinds of tea so it's about her being accepted into the society getting a tea dragon herself as well because she comes across one that's been abandoned and also her learning this craft of making tea so it's just a cute little vibes vibes book but I would recommend it if you're looking for something like that because it was adorable <laughs> and then the last one that I read was also a graphic novel it's interview with the vampire Empire, Claudia's story, and it is written by Ashley Marie Witter, who also did the illustrations, and then in Anne Rice also had a hand in it some way or another. But this is basically um, Claudia from Interview with the Vampire. It's her story. So I think some of it is told in Interview with the Vampire itself, which I've not read, so I can't really tell on the- I can't really say much about the book. But as for the movie, I'm pretty sure she's actually in it, at least mentioned. I can't remember if her story is mentioned, but her um some of the like climax stuff that happens in the movie at least i can only speak on the movie i know it's so embarrassing i don't own the book hard to read it when i don't own it <laughs> anyway i'll get to it eventually but part of the climax in the movie at least is actually a direct result of stuff that happens in this graphic novel or stuff that happened to claudia so i really liked the style that this was drawn in it was very like claudia has herself looked like a doll and then it was very what's it called sepia 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 you know like very beige black that kind of look looked very antique and then blood um not like super vibrant blood but still red blood i thought it was just it was very cool the art style was very cool i really enjoyed that part of it a very creepy story as well <laughs> very creepy but again we got to do with vampires and i don't know maybe i'm biased but i really enjoyed it I just, after finishing it, I was very bummed that I hadn't read Interview with the Vampire. Because it's also been such a long time since I watched the movie. I think I was very young at the time watching it with my mom. Age limits on movies don't exist in my household, so they let me watch whatever I wanted to. <laughs> I was probably arguably too young to watch it when I did. But yeah, it's making me really want to read the book. So I'm gonna try to see if I can get my hands on it. Um, but I would, uh, if you're a fan of it, because as far as I could read from other people doing reviews, so this is just quoted from them, but if you're a fan of the book, they would recommend that you have a look at the graphic novel. Also just art style wise, I thought it was so cool. I thought it was very well done and very atmospheric, very creepy, very sad as well. Oh, oof. Anyway, so yeah, those were my 13 reads of 
December. Next wrap up will probably be a little bit longer than this, so I apologize, but <laughs> I'm doing my best here, okay? Hope you enjoyed it anyway. If you've read any of the books that I've talked about today, let me know your thoughts of them below or your thoughts on them. English is not doing great today. I'm just saying. Like, we're not getting along very well, the language and I, but um, I got through the video, <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to check out any of the books, there are links to them in the description box. And if you want to check out the book club and read Guild and also have a soul with us this month. There's a link to that at the top of the comment section in the pinned comment. However, I'm gonna leave you to it now. We've been, uh, we've been here for a while, so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, but also TBR videos and bookish unboxings and readathons and all the other booktube stuff, definitely consider hitting the subscribe button. Got lots of videos planned for January here as well, so you got something to look forward to if you enjoyed this video. But that's all I got for you guys today, so I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.